writers and on behalf of the uh, Allen County Convention and Visitors Bureau, I have uh, Ms. Sherry Brenneman here with me. Uh, Sherry or Sheree, I always get it. Either way. Um, just want to talk real quickly. Uh, this year, we've been honored to uh, been awarded the uh, this, I'm sorry, the Region 4 AAU Championships. Uh, we hosted this event last year and again in 2004, so this will be our third year. Uh, it's kind of unique that uh, AAU actually give, give this to us the second year because normally they give it to you one time, you don't get it. Uh, but because of the hospitality, because of uh, the way things went last year, they were really pleased. Some of the reviews they got back from the visitors from out of town on our hotels, on the food, and just on that hometown warm Lima. Uh, welcome. Uh, they decided to award us uh, the event again. Uh, this event will be held at uh, Spartan Stadium um, from uh, June 29th through July 2nd. Uh, we're expecting about 1,200 athletes. Uh, these athletes will be come from all over Ohio, uh, Western Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. Uh, this is a top-notch uh, track meet. Uh, a lot of the uh, participants in the past from this meet have went on to do great things in college, and even a few that have made the Olympics. So. I'm going to have Sherry talk a little bit about the uh, financial impact that it will have on our community. Okay. Well, first of all, I'm very happy to have him back again this year. And on my records, uh, he says 1,200 athletes, but we know that their mother and dad are with them, and I counted one child, but there's a lot, they bring families, I know. So I did it for an, attend of an attendance of about 3,300 athletes altogether. And with that, that would bring in around uh, $1,848,000, which I think it'll be closer to $2 million by the time we will probably get more than 3,300 people here. Um, the host hotel this year is Howard Johnson's, and they're also using the Wingate, uh, Hampton Inn, and Holiday Inn. And the impact, they get the impact from the when they where they eat, the money they spend to come, the tournament, all those sorts of things using the stadium. So that's where we get that figure. And um, it's always a great pleasure to work with Chris and DiCarlo because they're very professional and it's wonderful to have all these young professional two Bs <laughs> here to run. And I like the sound of all their medals are clanking together. That means they've won a lot. So um, it's a real privilege to have them here. And, we're, and they had promised me they would bring it back. So they had to fulfill their promise too. But uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful organization. Thank you. Uh, and lastly, uh, with this event, uh, what happens with this event, this is, again, the regional championships. And what they do, those athletes that qualify being the top uh, six or top five, six or five athletes that uh, finish in that top six or five will qualify for the national championships. Uh, the national championships this year will be held at Eastern Michigan University in Detroit. Uh, last year we were down in Houston, so this travels each year, uh, switches around. I think next year we're back out in Iowa. so. Uh, just to be able to participate in the national championships is quite an honor. Uh, we have a couple of athletes that have actually competed on a national level. Uh, Zion Jackson has been an actual national champion, meaning that he was the uh, number one in the nation. I think uh, Giandolo has a national championship medal. So does this young man here, um, <laughs> Don Gale. I'm sorry, Don Gale. Uh, his sister went to Florida with us last year. This is one of our new athletes. So uh, we travel all over the country. So again, these athletes are some of the best, not just locally, but they've proven that they've been some of the best in the country. So we're proud of that and proud of their lineage. And we always let them know that we're from Lima. So not Lima, that we're from Lima. So again, we're looking forward and we're asking the public, the community, if they want to come out. Uh, again, we're going to be out from June 29th, which is Thursday to July 2nd. On that Thursday, will be mainly a lot of field events and multi-events. The same thing Friday and Saturday is when things will really get revved up with all the uh, sprint events that everyone likes to see. Uh, we have a uh, Quite a few sponsors from our area. Uh, we'll have the uh, the Jumbotron, as I call it, at the stadium will be on. So uh, it's going to be a great event. Again, if anyone is, uh, uh, have nothing to do that weekend, come out. You're going to see some terrific uh, track and field athletes from all over uh, this area. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Chris. And uh, guys and gals, uh, some of these look like, well, these guys are too young to remember who Mr. T was, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> huh? He's like some of these guys are like Mr. T starter kits I mean, with all that jewelry. That that's that's pretty impressive, and what a great way to showcase these young men and women, the city of Lima. You know, events like this tells you Lima's back out on the front porch and has been on the front porch. And when you get on the front porch, what happens? People stop by. They have a conversation. They begin to get interested. Then they invest, and. 
for this group to come back to us and say, hey, we want to be a part of being in Lima again for this region. Uh, what a fantastic way to showcase the community. So thanks for all you guys do to help make that happen and share everything that the CVB does to help bring that together as well. This is not something that just happens overnight. I mean, just the planning and the, and the commitment of, of, of the athletes and, 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 of course, the families and all the things that come together, it's not easy, but uh, it's well worth it. And congratulations, and we look forward to uh, uh, this year, again, June 29th, through July 2nd, get out to the stadium and enjoy some uh, terrific, terrific uh, activities with these young men and women. Um, next up, Mr. Warner Roach, Streets Parks, or excuse me, Streets Superintendent and Direct Deputy Director and all the good things to talk about some alley work that we're doing. Mr. Roach. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. <clears throat> I just want to first, before I talk about Alice, just kind of congratulate what we just saw. I mean, that is awesome. They are obviously the best of the best. When you talk AAU, I mean, you guys are out there kicking butt and making Lama proud. So good job. Good job. Appreciate it. I'm here to talk about Alice. Uh, a trivial question, Rick. Yes, sir. How many alleys does Lama have? City. Exactly. No, <laughs> an estimate. An estimate? I'm going to say uh, 1,400. Oh, good guess, but that's too many. <laughs> 569 alleys. We have 569 alleys. Um, it's alley time. We're grading alleys. We have completed 360 of those 569. Um, we um, have run into some things this year with alleys. We have to first we start in May. We start in May because uh, we have to let the ground thaw. Okay, and what we've seen this year is a lot of grass uh, grown in the alley, so we have to get the grass off, take the sod up, grade the alleys, and then, and then put a small amount of stone in them, and most of them. Okay, so that's been, uh, that's been it take, it's taken longer, so we just want people to be patient about them. Also, we have completed the first, second, fifth uh, wards. Uh, we're, we're doing the tail end of the of the um, uh, third and sixth wards, and we're going to finish up on the fourth and seventh. So, again, uh, please be patient with us. Uh, we, we're still getting calls, you know, hey, you haven't gotten to my alley yet, but we, we want to do it. When we do it, we want to do it right and make sure uh, the water drains off when we have these storms and all. Uh, some people's basements have been flooded, stuff like that, because of how it changes over, over the winter. and. So when we grade these, we grade it in a way that it drains to cat's bases and stuff instead of in people's backyards. So that's what's going on with alleys. Thank you. <laughs> that's always yes. exciting. How many alleys is it? Just the ones at the tables, the gravels, all stones, both? It's both. It's both. Uh, the ones that are paved, what we do there, we've seen a lot of potholes in those, so we, we patch those. Um, and then there's a procedure we have to go through to get an alley paved if we want them paved. But, but the ones that are already paved, we, uh, we fix the potholes and we, we, we found a lot of them that are half paved, half, half dirt. Um, so we have to grade the dirt and fix the, fix the pavement on it. So, yeah. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, with 10 inches of rain just in the month of May, I don't know how you guys have gotten through what you've gotten through. I mean, that's a lot of... A lot of prep, and um, I, I like what you're saying. We're going to do it right, and that's, it does take a little longer if you do it right. Why we're asking trivia questions, Mr. Roach, or anyone else in the crowd, <laughs> for world fame and some fabulous prizes to be announced at a later date, how many gallons of water does it take to fill Schoonover Pool? Any, any, any takers? We'll even take the media. Who, huh? Come on, guys. 3,000. 3, You're close. 5,000. 5, You're a little bit closer. 8,000. 8, You're getting closer. 10, oh, look at everybody. 10,000. <laughs> You're getting closer. Yes, sir. 15,000. You're closer. 15,000. 18,000. Is it, I'll give you a multiple choice. Is it A, 1.1 million, 
Is it B, 100,000? Is it C, 95,000? 1.1 million gallons of water to fill that beast. Why we're talking about the pool, I want to give you a little background uh, on what's going on. Just a reminder, our hours out at the pool are from 12 noon to 7 p.m. We do have pool parties available after 7 on most nights. Um, but we, those are only about two hours because of the, we don't have lights in the pool. We have them above, but you have to have them in the pool to have parties or people in the water after dark. Um, so again, uh, 12 to 7. Admission for 13 and under is $3. For 14 and over, it's $4. Those are for, uh, for the day. We also have season passes that are $30 for the youth of 13 and younger. 14 and over is 40. And, um, we do have family passes available too. So um, stop out, check with the folks out there. Uh, a great opportunity. The pool uh, is in its 77th year, July 4th, um, 19, do the math, 40. The pool was dedicated. And so 77 years later, here we are uh, enjoying the same facility as the W. PA project and then um, quite a qu quite lucky to have the facility that we have so feel free to stop out also the other thing I wanted to mention uh, our uh, parks playground program for individuals 6 to 12 years of age um, is in session uh, Rob Park is the only one that is full at this time so Froat um, and uh, Lincoln are both have slots available if you want to come out Got some field trips planned again this year. Uh, a terrific opportunity to get out and enjoy um, uh, a playground program that it's a day camp setting that runs from about 8:30 till 3:30 uh, in the afternoon. Get out and enjoy that. We provide lunch as well through the Lima City Schools uh, lunch program, and that cost is uh, thirty dollars uh, for the summer. So it's about seventy-five cents a day to get out and enjoy. Um, you know, a camaraderie, get to meet some new folks and, and uh, have some fun throughout the summer. It's an eight-week program, started last week, and we'll wrap up uh, the first part of August. Okay, that's about it for us today. We'll uh, break down for any individual interviews. Some of these future stars might want to be interviewed by the news and talk about what's coming up. But uh, enjoy, uh, enjoy the upcoming event, guys and gals. I know you'll make Lima proud. Terrific job. Thank you all.